Okay, let's do this next one. Let's uh, show the reaction between the constituent elements of, um, to make the molecule phosphorus trichloride. Okay, so it gives you the name of the molecule. So if you recall um, how to name covalent compounds, you'll know that uh, the molecular formula of this compound is PCL3. So how did I know it's a covalent compound? Well, because phosphorus and chlorine are both non-metals. So um, I should have been able to figure out, well, let's just do this for right now, okay? So phosphorus trichloride, um, so let's draw the Lewis structures of phosphorus and chlorine. So um, which one is going to be the central atom? So if you recall the Lewis structure drawing rules that we went over, hydrogen and all of the halogens can only make one bond in these simple Lewis structures. So you would expect that the chlorines would be on the outside of the molecule and phosphorus to be on the inside of the molecule. You would also see that once you drew the Lewis structures of these um, atoms, that phosphorus will have like three little arms that will be able to grab three different atoms, and chlorine will only have one arm each. So that should also clue you in as to where the position of these atoms should be relative to each other. But anyways, let's draw them out. So phosphorus, um, group 15, so it's going to have uh, five valence electrons, so one, two, three, four, five, and you can see there that it could fit one, two, three more in its valence shell. Uh, phosphorus can actually expand its valence shell, we'll talk about that a little bit later, um, and you can start adding more um, than just the three um, atoms that, are, that we're depicting here, and we'll build some of these uh, molecules, uh, what we call expanded valence molecules like PCL5, for example, um, later. Uh, but for right now, let's do these simple molecules. So chlorine has the seven valence electrons. And again, I'm just going to put the one electron on the side of the phosphorus atom, because remember, I'm going to make those fish of arrows. So again, I'm just putting that one empty spot um, empty orbital next to the phosphorus atom. Like that. And then I'm going to draw my fish hook arrows. This time I'm not going to write the one electron because it's not conventional to do. So let's draw what happened here. So remember, fish hook arrows, only one head of the arrow. Why? Because like what we said before, double-headed arrows mean two electrons, right? Single-headed arrows mean one electron moved. One electron moving, one electron moving. Okay. So remember, they're grabbing on to each other, so like holding hands when we, when we show that. We show that as a line. And remember, we still show the non-bonding valence electrons of the particular atoms. And we'll point those out here in a second. So, show another line. CL. Another line. CL. And then the phosphorus as its two non-bonding valence electrons. So there's these three covalent bonds, right? All three of them have two bonding electrons in them, right? So two, four, six bonding electrons. Non-bonding electrons, oh, this is around the central atom of phosphorus, we'll say, right? Non-bonding electrons is one, two. So again, that adds up to eight electrons, full octet. We can do the same around the fluorines, too, in this case. All right, so the bonding electrons, how many are there? 
just the one bond, so just two electrons. And how many non-bonding electrons? Well, two, four, six. Okay, and if we add that up, it's eight electrons too. So octet, octet. Everybody's got an octet. Okay, so this is what we call the Lewis structure of phosphorus trichloride. So hopefully with those couple examples, you guys are getting it. Um, I'll add some more from earlier recordings and should be enough, I think.